Winter Roses, Summer by Fairy Tale Lover, Chapter 5 Wedding Bells. Obviously, the calm and happiness was too good to be true. Ned summoned John and Daenerys to his study. We've received a raven saying that the king himself is coming to Winterfell. Why? John asked. Ned sighed. Affairs of court. What matters is that the king is coming, and he is bringing the queen, their children, her brothers, and a whole host of people. And when should we expect his grace? Daenerys asked, holding back an eye roll. Are you delaying the wedding? No, Ned was quick to answer. Absolutely not. I sent a missive to King's Landing, informing them of the wedding, though I'm not sure whether Robert is aware of it or not. We are all aware of the situation, so I'd rather have you two well married by the time the king crosses the neck. Daenerys wanted to groan. She'd like nothing more than to avoid Robert Baratheon and his offspring. I suppose there will be no way to say we're, I don't know, going on a voyage after our wedding? Or even going to the Blessed Island? Ned sighed. That could be perceived as a slight, and we should avoid that. I understand it won't be pleasant for you to be in their presence, Daenerys, but I hope you understand. Robert is king now. To affront that is a risk of your life. Daenerys nodded. Good. Besides, by the time the group from King's Landing arrives, you'll have been married for at least a moon. If they delay leaving King's Landing, which they probably will happen, Knowing Robert the way I do, even better. Are you nervous? Sansa asked, brushing Daenerys's long silver hair. No, she replied with a smile. I love John, and I know he loves me. We were always meant to be. What's there to be nervous about? Sansa blushed and stayed quiet for a few minutes. Septa Mordain was talking today. About a wife's duty. Daenerys sighed, understanding where this was going. Your Septa doesn't know what she is talking about, Isla said, looking up from her sewing. But she was taught. Yes, she was taught by those who came before her. Was she ever married? Sansa thought for a moment. Have you been married? she asked. Isla looked at the girl and nodded. She says it hurts. It hurts if your husband is unkind, or if he doesn't care to make it not hurt. Isla answered, but she's right. The first time isn't much fun. Later, later it is. She says it's a sin to enjoy it. That the gods look down on women who enjoy it. Women to see it as a mere task. To fulfill our wifely duty to our Lord Husband and provide him with heirs. Only, only low women enjoy it. I see. Isla said, hiding a chuckle. God forgive me, milady, but if we aren't meant to enjoy it, why did they make our bodies to enjoy it? I am not saying to go running to have fun with the first boy to smile at you. No. But the way I see it, the gods, all done new, want us to be happy. Sides, why can men enjoy it and we women can't? It's the way the world is, Sansa said, shrugging. Daenerys snorted. Perhaps it shouldn't be. Isla didn't bother hiding her juggle this time. You're not changing the world that much by yourself, milady. You can try, but it's going to take more than only one lifetime. But the gods, Sansa started. Tell me something, girl. You heard of a high scepter? Because I haven't. These gods you talk about, it's your mother's southern gods. Their rulers come from a mouth of a man in King's Landing. Rules and rules and rules. And penitence. To those gods, you're only doing something right if you're giving them money or being unhappy. I think the children and the first men had the right of it. Worshipping the gods of the forest. You don't hear them telling you to suffer or pay them your hard-earned gold. The first men used to sacrifice to the old gods, Daenerys said. Mr. Levin taught us. Yeah, well, men are stupid. It doesn't matter where they're from. No use in blaming the gods for it. So, you're not afraid, Danny? Sansa asked. That it'll hurt? No. No, I'm not, Daenerys declared softly. 
I... We've kissed. And it feels wonderful, Sansa. Besides, it's John. Do you really think he could hurt me? Sansa smiled. I hope father finds me a husband as kind as John one day. Oh, good. Your brother was cut from a rare cloth, he was. Isla said, smiling and turning back to the shirt she was mending. It's in his eyes. But I am sure your lord father will try his hardest to choose someone who is almost as good. Daenerys smiled again, happy, as Sansa picked up the brush once more. She could hardly believe she was getting married in a day. Sansa was soon done with the brushing, tying the long silver strands back into a loose braid. I'll see you in the morning, Danny, the girl said. Sleep well. You must look beautiful tomorrow. Isla laughed. That'll be hard to change with a night bad sleeve slept, my lady. Sansa left, smiling, and Daenerys, amused, stood from her vanity. What are you sewing, Isla? It's late. The housekeeper smiled. Just a shirt, my lady. I'm stocking up on those and mending the ones we have. Daenerys saw the shirt in question and blushed furiously. Isla laughed loudly. Fred, not, girl. You're young and in love. That's much more than most of you noble folk can say. Now, go on to bed. Aren't you going to sleep? Eventually. Isla answered and chuckled at the poorly hidden eagerness in the girl's voice. Right here on this chair, she said, pointing her head to the servant's door she was blocking. Call it a superstition, milady, but the groom doesn't see the bride before the wedding. Sides, gods know what time those ladies will come for you in the morning, and you and the young lord have a habit of making me go drag you back. Daenerys rolled her eyes. A month later, and now you're bothered? Not bothered, no. You're a princess, milady. That does come with its burdens. Rest easy with the thought that tomorrow night there won't be anyone to think it unbecoming. You'll be walking through the front door, not the servant's back door. And I'll be busy stitching baby blankets. Daenerys blushed furiously as she got into bed. The corridors were eerily silent as she traversed them, not one soul in sight. Finally, she heard some noise and pushed open the door to one of the rooms. There were three people inside. The man had her hair, silver white, but he was taller, and his eyes were a dark indigo rather than purple. Aegon, he said to a woman, nursing a newborn babe in a great wooden bed. What better name for a king? Will you make a song for him? The woman asked. He has a song, the man replied. He is the prince that was promised, and his is the song of ice and fire. He looked up when he said it, and his eyes met Danny's. And, s and it seemed as if he saw her standing there beyond the door. There must be one more, he said. Though whether he was speaking to her or the woman in the bed, she could not say. The dragon has three heads. Daenerys gasped and ran out of the room. Had she just... Was that Rhaegar? There was another noise, and she followed it warily. Two heavy doors opened, groaning and creaking, and she found herself in a grand room with a tall ceiling. Across from her, elevated on a dais, was the Iron Throne. I'm in the Red Keep. Danny thought. She stepped forward and faltered in the middle of the room. Behind the throne hung three banners, but they weren't the Baratheon Stag or the Lannister Lion. Oh no, there were three of them, all equal in size, denoting their equal importance. Her heart started beating fast, her breathing heavy. To the left, the grey direwolf head, in a white background she had grown up with, was clearly representing House Stark. To the right stood a three-headed red dragon in a black field, representing House Targaryen. In the middle stood a third sigil, a single winter rose, one silver star in each petal, on a black field with red fringes. Winter is coming, said a voice making Daenerys turn around. It was a woman, 
beautiful and regal, wearing a most elegant dress, blue as frost. On her head rested a crown of winter roses. She had dark brown hair and grey eyes, the features of a stark of Winterfell, and Danny felt that was all too obvious. Lyanna? She smiled coyly. Winter is coming, Daenerys Stormborn. Why are you saying this? Because it is true. You must decide now where you will stand. Lyanna smiled. Make me proud. Then her face morphed, and in her face stood a tall woman with silver hair and purple eyes. You're our daughter. Make us proud, Danny. Rayella disappeared, and Daenerys turned again suddenly, drawn by another noise. The banner with a modified starling sigil waved in the cold air. The Iron Throne stood proud beneath it. My birthright, Danny thought. I'm the last dragon. Next to the throne stood a tall white wolf, as tall as a horse. A dire wolf. But he didn't have red eyes. It wasn't ghost. What is your choice, Daenerys? The wind whispered. Danny looked from the throne to the wolf. What is my choice? Whoa! Rob gasped as Danny came down the stairs. You look... He was at a loss for words. You look like a princess! Danny smiled. Very appropriate, Rob. You're right, he said, and chuckled. I think you might very well make my brother's heart fail. Well, I hope not, she laughed. I'd hate to become a widow before the wedding even takes place. Rob laughed too, offering her his arm as they could walk out to the godswood. Daenerys' smile grew as they came closer, seeing the number of people present. But that didn't matter. Those people were only there for political and social reasons. The only one who mattered was the one standing near the heart tree next to his father. Their path was illuminated by several lanterns, hundreds of candles twinkling in the darkness of the chilly night around them, as Rob led her to the weirwood. Daenerys and Jon immediately smiled at each other, to the point their cheeks would hurt, and Ned smiled too, more subdued as he started the ceremony. Who comes before the old gods this night? Daenerys of Alstar Targaryen, Rob said. A woman grown and flowered, trueborn and noble. She comes to beg the blessing of the gods. Who comes to claim her? Jon stepped forward. Jon of House Starling, Lord of the Blessed Island. Who gives her? Rob of House Stark, who is her foster brother. Lady Daenerys, do you take this man? Ned asked. Daenerys' smile grew even larger. I do. Rob then raised her hand, kissing the back of it. To annoy John, obviously, but he was so happy he didn't even care. And then gave it to his brother. John and Daenerys joined hands and knelt before the heart tree, so the old gods could witness their union. And a moment of silence took over the godswood, as the entire wedding party took it in prayer. Once they returned to their feet, Danny turned around, and John took from her shoulders her black and red cloak, bearing the sigil of House Targaryen. Setting it aside, he smiled at Sansa as she brought forward the new cloak. The girls still had no idea how, but Isla had managed to find some special blue ink and dye to the fabric. So the cloak was, like the winter roses that embroidered it, blue as frost, lined with fluffy grey fur, and not the common blue they saw in other heraldry. With the wedding finished, John led the wedding party back to the Great Hall, which would hold the feast. He was to Ned's right, the place of honour, and had eyes only for Daenerys as they sat and the food was served. Many guests had come, from far and near. The northern lords were, obviously, hosted within the walls of Winterfell, as were a few of the southern friends of House Stark. But with the unique trading position the Blessed Island had, even Essosi merchants had come, what meant Winterfell was overflowing with the visitors and their contingents. 
But as the time to receive and open presents came, it was a Pentoshi magister that brought one of the most valuable and most dangerous. Dragon eggs, my lady starling, from the shadowlands beyond Ashai. The ages have turned them to stone, but they are still beautiful. Daenerys felt a thrill of excitement travel down her spine. Thank you, magister. John smiled at his wife's glee, but Ned was worried. That is a very ostentatious present, my lord, the man said. Illyrio only smiled. My business has flourished since the trade lines with the Blessed Island were opened, Lord Stark. And I hope they will only grow better from now on. It is a precious gift. But one I hope will mark the start of a long and fruitful friendship. Ned clenched his jaw, but could do nothing. I thank you, Magister, John said, for such a beautiful and priceless gift. I look forward to a prosperous friendship as well. The Magister inclined his head in deference and turned away to leave. A long line followed. But Daenerys never recovered from her amazement at the eggs, and no other gift compared. It was hours later when all social etiquette followed, and dances and laughs completed. Theon almost ruined the good mood. I think it's time for the bedding ceremony. The ale and wine flowed freely, as the occasion demanded, so there was a chorus of agreements among the guests. I don't think so. No, John stated. Ah, oh, come on, darling. Theon slurred, hiccuping. What's wrong? What's wrong is that I think it is highly unbecoming to break your face in half on my wedding night. Rob laughed, trying to defuse the situation. No need for this, lads. Come on, brother. It is tradition. One we will not follow, brother. No one will touch my wife. Enough, Ned said, hiding his amusement. John was more like him than Rob. He always had been. Lyanna's blood made him more of a true wolf than Rob's tully blood allowed. There will be no bedding ceremony, he announced. There was a loud complaint from lords and ladies both, and Daenerys passed her hand through John's arm, trying to soothe him. I do think it's time to go, though, she said with a hint of a blush. John's murderous glare vanished, being replaced with a predatory gleam as he turned to her. I heartily agree. They left the Great Hall and traversed the corridors in silence, thick anticipation between them, even with a group of drunken guests following to stand out at their door, throwing bawdy comments their way. Daenerys smiled as the door closed behind them, the racket from the feast in the hall now finally muffled, though the witnesses outside were still causing a ruckus. She was thankful once again that there had been no bedding ceremony. If Theon's comments had been bad this way, she couldn't imagine what he had said if he had ripped her dress. So, husband, finally alone. John smiled. Finally, wife. Does that mean you will finally stop holding back? John smirked and let his cloak slide to the floor and reached for hers in a beat. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Lovely wedding ceremony, and yes, I skipped a sex scene because you guys know me by this point, I don't read those aloud. Anyway, oh, that was just pretty. I loved it. <laughs> John being all protective of his bride. Nice. And Ned reminiscing that John's more like him because of Liana. Few arguments on that point, but what can you do? Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye!